So let me ask you a serious question. What is your favorite game of all time? I'm guessing your answer would be similar to this. That is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. There is no way I can answer that question. For me, it always comes back to Chrono Cross. It is and always has been a Legend of Zelda a link to the past. Well, obviously the best video game series of all time is Suikoden, right? <laughs> well, which game is the best? I, I, I can't just pick one. Now let me rephrase the question and see if your answer changes. What is the most important game to you? What I mean by this is a game that changed the way you thought about games. It had such a profound effect on you that the way you viewed video games was forever changed. For me, the answer is easy. Sega's Fantasy Star. Following the release and frenzy over Dragon Quest in Japan, I think Sega immediately decided they should get on that train. The creator of their popular Alex Kidd character, Reiko Kadama, came forward with the idea for Fantasy Star. Now, I grew up in and out of arcades, and my love for Space Harrier guaranteed that I would ask for the Sega Master System instead of an NES for Christmas in 1986. Owners of the Master System know it was a tough situation to be in. The NES was completely destroying it in the hearts and minds of most kids. When I saw an ad for Fantasy Star, I could hardly believe what I was looking at. The next wave in gaming? You're telling me. The singular picture of a sandworm looked better than anything that could be on the Nintendo. The most important thing to me was putting this image away as ammo for the slowly ramping war between Sega and Nintendo. I guess the least important thing to me apparently was, what is this game about? How does it play? I didn't even know what kind of game it was. But honestly, did it matter? Fantasy Star is the story of Alice. The adventure begins when her older brother, Nero, is gunned down by police officers by the orders of the once beloved, now tyrannical, King Lassic. Swearing revenge, Alice takes up Nero's sword and follows his last words to seek out a man named Odin. Alice is joined in her quest by a little talking cat thing called Meow, an esper named Noah, and the aforementioned warrior, Odin on an adventure that takes place across the three planets of a solar system called Algol. We start out on the planet Palma, full of rolling hills, green forests, and large bodies of water. Closer to the sun, there's Motavia, the desert planet. And moving in the other direction is the icy Dezorus. Trying to differentiate itself from its competition, Fantasy Star mixes technology and fantasy in a really awesome way. Dragons, spaceships, swords, laser guns. I'd never seen anything quite like it. On my 11th birthday, my family decided to go shopping. I had a hunch that maybe Fantasy Star had been released. I walked into KB Toys and saw it hanging behind the register. It's going to cost me $80. Every penny I'd gotten as a gift, and then some. But it wasn't a hard choice. I'd poured over that ad for so long there's no way I wouldn't be getting it that day. Once I finally booted the game up, I was completely in awe. These graphics are so good. Continue? You mean this game has a save system like Zelda did? Then, as soon as the actual game started, I was faced with this. What the heck is this? Where's that sandworm from the pictures? Why are the graphics suddenly so bad? I walked around town for a second, then went outside. I got into my first battle with what looked like a giant fly. I had to select what I wanted to do from a list of options. Attack, item, talk? I was killed immediately. It took me a few deaths to figure out what I was even doing, and what was even happening in the fight scenes. I didn't get menu-driven, turn-based things just yet. It was so the opposite to anything that I'd played in my life. Even winning a battle, I was presented with more questions. What are experience points? Meseta? I didn't have the faintest idea what was going on. And despite being impressed by the 3D dungeons, I felt like I'd made this huge mistake. All this excitement, and I think I hate this game. I put it away and just played something else. 
randomly deciding to give the game another chance, I discovered the secret to proceeding. Yes, there's an item called Secrets, and you have to try to buy it three times. Of course, it's expensive, and I figured out experience in leveling up while I was saving enough money, er, Meseda, for it. Secrets turned out to be a road pass that I needed to get to the spaceport. I'd been joined by Niao by the end of the night, and from there, everything came together. I was daydreaming about the game at school. I convinced my friends to get their own copy of the game. We'd exchanged progress and hints to advancing over the phone and on the school bus every day. And when we got stuck, we would call the 1-800-USA-SEGA hint line. By the time I finally defeated Dark Falls late that summer, I'd been on an adventure, really, that no other game could ever match. It's not just how good the game was, but the entire experience that my friends and I had. I still have my original Fantasy Star cartridge to remind me of this time. It could never be replaced. In 2003, with the launch of the Sega Ages 2500 line on the PlayStation 2, Sega decided to remake Fantasy Star. Sounds great, right? Eh, not quite. Released only in Japan, this remake was obviously done on the cheap. Flat out, this certainly isn't the remake a trailblazer like Fantasy Star deserved or needed. It feels like a Flash game with their characters slipping and sliding all over the map. All the characters got a typical modern anime makeover and didn't fare well at all in the transition. Meow is now brown. And just how obnoxious does Odin look? The music is just totally inappropriate it loses that futuristic vibe that the original had, instead opting for a more whimsical, festive sound. I'm sure the development of the remake was well-intentioned, but just look at this artwork that appears early in the game, and tell me that they really cared. How does this even get a pass? Looking back, there's so much that could be said about Fantasy Star that would be true. Everything from having a strong female protagonist, to having 3D first-person dungeons on an 8-bit system, and they animate shockingly well, to having three full-sized overworlds to explore that made every other Japanese console RPG look tiny in comparison. So I can say, without hesitation, that while Fantasy Star probably isn't my favorite game of all time, I mean, heck, I couldn't answer that question. It is without a doubt the most important game for me. It shaped the way I'd enjoy them from that moment on in ways that would never be repeated. Music